So this is the follow-up video. This is the follow-up video from my welding series or welding video. So the welding was done, and uh, I then diluted some amarit paint and <coughs> and uh, sprayed it on both on the outside and most importantly on the inside of the repair and uh, and uh, the idea of the amarit paint is just to do rust proofing so right now what I'm on to it's actually putting a bit of body filler I'm gonna put some body filler and uh, the body filler Inten the intention of the body filler is to smooth out all of the transition points here specifically in this areas of the welds and also along the bottom because the bottom is dented as I was pushing down and forcing the metal into the correct shape I created a few dents um, you know after welding them they're actually not struck there's no problem with the structure because it's very strong because of the weld but uh, it, it's been dented as part of forcing the metal into the correct shape so I'm going to put body filler and then uh, while sanding I'm hoping and this is just hoping that I end up with f smooth surfaces that will not give away the fact that there has been a large repair in here and I've not used a part from another car I've actually built something b by hand so I guess all you got to see now is just me throwing a bit of um, surface cleaner I'm gonna throw a bit of surface cleaner here and then I'm gonna read the instructions of this start putting this the, um, the filler I've never done body filler before but I've uh, seen on the different videos on YouTube guys saying that you're supposed to put it in the direction of the curve so in this case I'm going to put it in this direction up here uh, hopefully I, I probably will have to actually have to put it in this direction in this cut and here in this direction so that everything smooths out a bit and meets kind of in here and here it will be just flat against the metal and then here on the bottom because of the the shape that I have bent it onto I'm probably going to put the body filler always in this direction and I'm gonna end up with uh, no body filler over there at all I think uh, but uh, it's a matter of experimenting so we're gonna move into the fast forward and uh, I reckon you're going to see about three to four hours of work just in this fast forward because I don't really have anything to say so here you can see I'm just mixing the body filler well, opening the tin and then mixing the body filler and that is actually a time-consuming task to mix the body filler and then just spread it and then focusing mainly on that area that I previously mentioned was the most important one but uh, you will see later in the video that I've actually spread body filler everywhere this is a uh, 60 times speed uh, it just makes you wonder why do I work so slowly, I reckon. But uh, yeah, mixing the the filler takes quite a while. And uh, here I'm just taking the excess of the of the filler with a hangul grinder, with uh, what's the name of it, a sanding disc. And then just you know by hand sanding again. The filler is not dry. So what happened is that clumps came out and it's now denting so I need to actually let it dry and then add more filler to it so that it will then eventually get to a complete straight area. Here I can't even feel the, the change even though I know that the weld is somewhere around here very close I can't feel it so that's pretty good but then I got a dip in there. So what I'm going to do is just mark every place that needs a bit more filler and then dry it a bit and uh, we'll have to give it another go tomorrow because this is a very long process of drying mostly because I've screwed up with too much filler so lesson number one or two or whatever don't put too much filler thin layers of filler let it dry then another thin layer of filler 
or at least that's my second attempt. Lesson number two may end up being don't do what I just said, but that is definitely what I'm going to attempt next. Here, I don't even know if this is at the original metal or the metal that I have welded anymore. Which is quite interesting because it's it's bulging out and uh, I have some filler here to, to fill it. But it's uh, it kind of feels like it's in the right place and that I'm just missing a bit of area in here. So I'm going to also put a bit of filler there. Just going to mark the places uh, and uh, see if I can do anything more today. But... I think now it's a matter of throwing the the heat gun at this and see if I can speed up the process of drying. But uh, it it may all go wrong. It may have some potential. We will find out in a minute uh, later. So here I'm just trying to fast dry the filler with the heat gun and then marking with a pen just the high and low spots and just trying to dry it again. Now as I was trying to dry I realized that there was just no hope the, the filler was too thick on the system so I had so I had to remove it by just using a screwdriver and then refill it again just with a thinner layer of filler. And that's what you see right here. And I was also just trying to put a bit more filler into the low spots that I had highlighted with the with the pen so you see that the, the pen marks are disappearing because there's filler on top of them now. And I'm just going back and trying to sand it as well as possible and then making it as smooth as possible. Now what I used here is, uh, I believe it was 120, but it may have been 80, uh, 80 grade sandpaper. So it's extremely coarse sandpaper and it, it worked okay to remove a fair chunk of it. But the problem that I kept having is that I was trying to sand the filler too early and it was slightly moist still and it was catching onto the sandpaper so then I had to remove the, sand, the filler from the sandpaper by hand. And you can see that I've drawn onto more low spots, used the sandpaper again, just drawing more low spots, putting filler again multiple attempts. Probably, if I knew what I was doing when this happened, I wouldn't have the need to do it so many times. But, uh, just to give everyone the, the idea of, you know, the amount of effort that it takes to actually get this done. And, uh, as you can see, there's just a lot of time spent into trying to make sure that that transition between the original metal and the weld and the new metal gets as smooth as possible. And uh, sometimes I use my fingers, sometimes I use the palm of my hand. Uh, most of the time, I actually use a metal, uh, sorry, uh, a wooden board uh, to hold the the sandpaper so that I could be 100% sure that I was using a flat surface uh, when I was sanding the filler. So very soon uh, you're going to see that I will start cleaning this using some uh, surface cleaner which I believe it's just a white spirit kind of thing but it is actually surface cleaner and now I'm putting some papers in just to make sure that I don't overspray because I'm about to put some uh, primer. Now I have four layers of primer, as you can see. Then I used uh, 1200 sandpaper, just very lightly, and then I put my uh, color matched black paint. And I put five coats of this color matched black paint, and then uh, two coats of lacquer on top. And but at the end, I just used some uh, black toned uh, polish to buff in the paint as well as I could. This is the end result of the ordeal. Now, what I've learned from this is that any, any little not noticeable thing when you're sanding down becomes a huge flaw after painting and you probably can see it really drastically here now but here's the thing as well from a distance 
and usually you don't get light like that uh, from a distance I reckon if someone is on the other side of the car park they won't even notice it now am I happy with it no definitely not I wanted a perfect smooth finish just like it's here and I don't have it so there will probably be another visit to this uh, next year or so uh, next year or the year after I mean we're at the time of recording it's November so next year is definitely uh, when it's going to happen if not the year after but right now I have strong metal I know this will pass the MOT I know this is safe it doesn't look good but uh, I can just give it another go with some body filler and uh, then sand it properly once I have the the means to do it and uh, I reckon this can be perfect uh, but it's pretty damn close considering that I was bending metal by hand and uh, sanding with the very coarse sandpaper that was too coarse for for its purpose uh, but yeah so that's the silica rust dealt with for good and uh, we'll see what comes up in the next video thanks for watching